Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Me and the Colonel are on a mission. If you picked up the uh, latest issue of Fine Woodworking, now I say latest, it is the April 2017. You look at the inside back cover, you'll see a bunch of disabled veterans who were in our workshop recently. And you'll also read in there how we uh, have committed 10% of our saw sales, 10% of the proceeds of our saw sales, into a tool fund to help disabled vets who would like to get into woodworking but haven't got the uh, tools and they need some help. So what you're looking at in front of us is some tools that we've selected for a particular vet. What we're going to do is show you what we do to tune them up so we can send them out to them as ready as possible. Some of these came from my excess stock, some came from some other donors, and some are new. And we'll go through and do the best we can. Now, Luther is a, a retired colonel, and he came out last week and helped me with the class that we ran. We had seven disabled vets in with six civilians. We had a fantastic class. So he's uh, doing what he can. I'm doing what I can to further this cause. What's the first thing we're going to do? Probably the, the, easy, the blades. The bl fine, okay. All right, so this is a five and a half. It's an older Stanley version. Actually, at that time, Bailey. Uh, this is actually a nice plane. It's got rosewood handles. I don't know the date on it, but I used this for a period of time. I actually traveled with it uh, when I was in between a previous company that I represented and before I started working helping Wood River or uh, Woodcraft develop Wood River. So we've taken the frog off. You can check this out on other videos we've done. But we took the frog out. We took all the parts off it. We flattened the face of the frog so that the blade would sit flat. Uh, that was fairly simple to reattach the lateral adjustment lever. You just put it back in, cut a little chamfer on that underside, and then peen it over so it stays put. This, uh, the sides, the, the sole we flattened, we adjusted the throat, so this is good to go. So what we need to do, what we're going to do, is put a new hawk blade, and, uh, and Luther's going to go ahead and prepare the blade. I'm going to go ahead and fix the chip breaker just because we've got some, some dings on it, even though it's new, it happened in the packaging. So, Jake, you want to go over and follow Luther. He'll walk you through the steps of bringing that up to speed as quick as possible. We may have to stop and start a little just because of the time. All right, so I'm going to take the first thing. I'm going to take the back, and I'm going to take it on the 1,000 grit uh, stone. And uh, using the David Charlesworth ruler trick is try to get, get it flattened all the way across the edge of the plane. You're working on 1,000 grit? Uh... Yeah, that's yeah. thousand grit yeah. stone. Let's move this. Are you nervous? No, I'm not nervous. <laughs> so just moving that back and forth, putting even pressure on the blade. And staying within a quarter of an inch of the edge? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta hold the Why is that important? Tell them why you need to stay within a quarter of well, an inch. Well if you if you moved back here, you're gonna change the angle of the uh, that you're putting in it, you're going to have a more steeper, a steeper angle. So you, you want to. What? There's a little bit of a cup in this thing, so if yep. you flip it over like that, it'll stay put a lot easier. It doesn't rock around quite so much. All right. So that's why you want to stay here, back and forth. And so I can kind of hold on to the ruler as I'm keeping it flat. You got one of those short fingers. Yeah, I, I do. Do you want to do a commercial for that stuff? Uh, yeah, if you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's a saw accident from a, a table saw without a riving knife. Uh, also, not paying a little attention to what I was doing. I was talking as I was putting cedar through. Uh, the the backside uh, curve closed in on itself, and it kicked back and pulled my hand over the saw blade. So I cut half of that off. They couldn't save it, and that was about a year ago. And uh, you know, I didn't want to pay the extra two thousand dollars to buy a saw stop. Well, I'll pay fifty thousand dollars to get that tip of that finger back. So, anyone that's out there, uh, saw stop is well worth the money. I don't care how much it costs. So take it from me. Don't do what I did. Well, okay. they, they watch this video. They might send you another one. Yeah, I know. I like to stop right at this point and just have a quick look at that and see if you. See what you got for, uh, oh, look at that, nice and flat. So, and that's really, you can see how I, the, if you can see it going all the way across, some, uh, that tells me the back's really flat. 
And that's good, and so that's really all we need as long as we have that all the way across. And now I can move to the uh, uh, 16,000. i got to flatten it first. So hit it with the back for 300 grit. And then we'll do the same thing. Get the ruler trick. Put the back on there. And we'll do the same thing. Hold on just one second. Flip this over again. Uh, bevel side down? It, well, you just <laughs> cup side. It, yeah. stays, it makes it stay put. That was a test to see if it would stay put. And same thing. And we want to see the mirror when we flip this over go all the way from one edge to the other and Jake I'm uh, you know what? Yeah. that looks pretty good I'm moving that I don't hope I don't know if you can see it but I'm seeing a mm -hmm. I'm seeing the reflection of the lights from one end to the other so so we are done with the back side of this blade so now we'll come back to the thousand we're gonna put the secondary bevel on here Primary being? Primary is already cut at uh, 25 degrees, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, get my grip, even my fingers there. I'm going to feel, there's a the 45, and I'm feeling for that. 25. I'm, 25. I'm feeling that. I'm going to come up slightly, and then I'm going to circle motion, even pressure along the blade. Work that for about. 10 to 15 seconds since it's a new blade until I get a burr. I like to watch that I'm getting some black uh, metal coming off and that looks good even across. Yeah. I'm feeling I got a burr. I got a burr from end to end so I'm done. So now we'll go to 16. Feel that bevel right there. Come up a little bit more than I did on the 1000 grit. Now I'm going to move back and forth since this is a soft stone. Even pressure. About 10 seconds. I'm going to finish up with about 3 seconds of more pressure on the right side. And 3 seconds of pressure on the left side. And I'm done. I should see quick little, quick little that uh, mirror. Yeah. Back bevel. I'm seeing a shine all the way across, so now I'll put a back bevel. Or just uh, burr, right? Yeah, take the, yeah, taking the burr off. So same thing as when I put the back bevel on. Just real quick. Now I'll do that. All right. I'm going to test it real quick. Well, we'll, we'll, get it. we'll put the, uh, fix the chip breaker, and then we will. Now the chip breaker, you can look at it, just, it's been beat up a little bit along the edge. So we're going to try to fix that. I might have to do it on the grinder, but I'm going to try on the 300 grit side. These are softer material than the blades, so it shouldn't take a lot. Find that bevel, and then raise up a little bit higher so I don't have to work the whole bevel. I can just do this with a secondary. Now this cuts more aggressively, you can hear it. Get enough fingers on that edge to even out the pressure. Now I'll look real quick and see. Mm -hmm. All I want is just to have a nice straight edge along there. I've got a burr on the back side to get rid of. I might give it a little bit more. Find the primary. Now this new style chip breaker has got a little lip on the underside. So what I need to do is work that burr. Uh, I might be able to just use this blade. I need to elevate the front, and the bottom needs to be sitting lower. It needs to be just the right amount. I'll stay within a quarter, in, within a quarter of an inch of this edge. Is it catching on you? Yeah, I still got a burr there. You've got to maintain a negative angle on this, or in other words, it'll lay, it'll create a gap, 
and when you start planing, the shavings will get stuck in that gap. And I flip that over to the 1000 grit side, and now it's just a matter of taking that burr and flipping it back and forth until it wears off. this is relatively soft and the reason it's, it takes a while to get rid of it is because it is soft on a plain, harder plane blade that uh, that burr comes off really quick okay where's your blade I had it you had it we got to test this on how much how much of a benefit was it to learning that technique? Oh, you, sharpening. It cut my sharpening down by at least 15 minutes after I jigged everything up and went over and sharpened and unjigged. So, tremendous speed. What? It's what a minute, minute and a half total by the time you get over there. And yeah. and, and now I now it's not a pain to sharpen more. So I stay sharp. So I play easier. So I enjoy the woodworking more. Sharpening is, is everything. Okay, now we've got to get that tight enough that it will hold the blade firmly when planing, but not so tight that it won't allow me to make adjustments. And I always evaluate it based on how easy it is to turn or adjust the lateral adjustment lever. Now, Something else that we did to this, I just made some cuts in that spin wheel because it's not a very large diameter uh, adjustment wheel. So by making cuts in there, it's brass, so it's easy to do. You can do it with a hacksaw, you can do it with a bandsaw even. But it just allows you to get a little better grip. Now hopefully we can get that blade to come out. There it is. Okay, so I see the blade on the right side. So I'm using the lateral adjustment lever to bring that over, get it so that it's almost parallel, retract it slightly. That's good. Put this in the vise. Got a piece of wax. There we go. Advance that a little bit. Feel that? Beautiful. Oh, that's also okay. Really good. So, there's his plane ready to go. Now, what we're going to send him, this is a uh, 325 grit um, Dia Sharp, who makes this? DMT stone. DMT. And this is a Norton 8000 1000 combination stone. So, you can use that stone to keep this stone flat. And the, Nor and the water stones need to be kept flat to the tune of every 45 seconds to a minute. Stop and flatten them, and then you'll keep it in perfect shape. Okay, that's our that's the sharpening stuff we're going to send them. Now we want to send them some tools in order to do some dovetailing. Let's see if we can blast through this a little bit quicker. I'm, this is a uh, fret saw. I'll do the handle. You can do the, the blade. Now, just that that uh, handle is so small that trying to grip it makes it very difficult to control. So just wrap some stick hockey stick tape around there like that. And then come back and cover it. And it doesn't have to be pretty, but it'll give you some grip. Now, you want to put the blade in and explain right. that. So, so this is a low. 12, uh, what is this, a 12 TPI skip tooth blade? 12 and a half actually. 12 and a half? You're looking for the exact ones. So it's going to be, uh, we want it to cut on a pull stroke, so I'm going to fill this. So, I've, so it's going to go in this way. So I'm going to loosen this one up just a bit. And I'll loosen this one and I'll start by engaging this all the way down, setting it in, and then tightening it up. And I 
I'm going to bring this back and I'll set it in here. Yeah, it's actually serrated inside those jaws, so it'll hold it quite well. And one thing you don't want to do is put it in backwards like I just did. The jaws are serrated? Yeah, inside there, you, if you open it up, you can see the little lines across there. Oh, I didn't know that. Tighten that down. And we'll bring this out. Push, tighten, and then yeah, we'll... Yeah, I, I give that about a quarter of an inch up there. What do you mean? So back this off before you do this. If you back this off about... Wait a minute. Can we come apart? Oh, this one wasn't tight. Come on, cooperate. Really snug those up. What I find is if, while well, this is loose, back this off. Do you expose about a quarter of an inch right here? I didn't have enough. Yeah, then put, yeah. Then snug that up. Now, when you tighten that up, you get some really good tension on that blade. It won't, the, it won't bow when you're, when you're using it. Is that a B sharp? Uh, <laughs> Jake, what is that? Now, to increase the capacity because of the depth of the throat, show them how to. Oh yeah, so I'm right-handed, and so I want to, I want to um, take this a 45 degree turn, uh, so that I can get down and this won't interfere with my wood when I'm cutting my uh, my waist on my dovetails. So I'm gonna go here. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta clamp you gotta get it right at the clamp. Yeah. If you don't, it'll, the blade will just flex. Probably more about a thirty degree. Right. And now, when you make your cut, yeah, so now it's good. A horizontal yeah. cut means the frame will be up here, up above the joint, and you're not restricted. Yeah, by so the now the now the blade's kind of pointing that way. Yeah. Now I, we got a marking gauge. This isn't my brand, but I want to show you what we can do. To make a marking gauge a little bit sharper, you want that end to be flat. So I've got a jig set up over here on the disc sander if you want to come over and have a look. It's just a slot that's held square to this disc sander, and I'll put that in the drill. And just spin that. And then when you can, I can tell just by touching my finger that it's really sharp. So after that, I've got a piece of pine right over here. What I'll do is just run that in there, get off any burr, and now that'll actually cut the wood instead of crushing the fiber. If you don't have your marking gauge sharp, you run it across the board, fiber gets crushed and it makes for a lousy joint. So for, how would they do that at home if they didn't have the big giant sand? You don't have that at home, but you can do. Actually, I'll walk them through that. It's a good idea. Need a uh, pillow. I mean, everyone doesn't have a... The big giant little, sander? Little 16 inch. We could label that the... Uh, uh, MOAS, mother of all sanders. It is. Actually, I've seen them even bigger. I grabbed a little bit too big of that. I don't think I've got one small enough. This one will fit. You know, hold that screw. This is a real easy way to sharpen. Just go face down on your sharpening stone. Keep your finger on it like that and just spin it around. Now, if you do this and make this a little bit out of sync with the head of that screw, then you're going to have to shorten the screw as well. 
and I don't think I did enough to worry about that. I want to put that back in place and actually test it. Now, if you're interested in contributing, I, uh, I want to make sure that these soldiers that we're helping, they may or may not know how to set this stuff up themselves. So I'd like to make sure that this these tools come to them ready to go. I'm just looking for a piece of wood to try this on. If you want, you can contact me directly, send the tools, we'll set them up and send them out. And if you want to keep tabs on who that was sent to, be happy to do that too. This is a piece of pine, so it's really soft, meaning if this isn't nice and sharp, this stuff will crush. Instead, we want it to slice like that. And then when you come along with your chisel and set that in there, it identify it locks it in and there's no second guessing as to whether or not your chisel is actually sitting in the groove now there's this marking gauge I wanted to walk you through but uh, we may have to do that on another episode on what we're going to do this dovetail saw I've actually done that before showed you how to take an inexpensive I think this is fifteen dollars at a hardware store I, I can the only thing I want to fix this on I want to test it but I this is coming apart so we'll fix that up I don't want to send them anything that feels defective um, chisels, we'll put an edge on the chisels. We'll do at least one on camera. Flat the backs? Yeah, the back's got to be flat. He may have to do that himself. That's a lot of work. We're going to send him a mallet. This is one of mine. There's a little bit of a crack in it, but it'll still work fine. It's just not the type that we can actually sell, but I'm sure whoever gets it will be happy to have it. And there's a nice marking knife, too, that's uh, already nice and sharp, and that'll leave a nice slice in the wood. So that'll get them started on some on hand fining and dovetails and give them a base to work with. Okay, like I said, if you have tools that you're not using that you'd like to donate, you can contact me, Rob at RobCosman.com. We'll be happy to pass them on. If you're a disabled veteran watching this and thinking you might like to get involved in woodworking, then by all means, contact me, Rob at RobCosman.com, and we will do what we can to help you. Anything you want to add? No, just thanks for what you're doing. No, appreciate your help too. Okay, we'll see you.